Hi, following on from the last video, VMFX introduction. This is VMFX configuration, in which I'm going to walk you through the configuration steps required to set up VMFX. If you haven't already watched the previous video, I'd recommend it, especially if you're new to these types of technologies. Um, there is a developer tool in the um, making, due for release sometime soon, called Easy VMFX, which has a wizard type uh, front end to guide you through um, a lot of this setup. But until it's available, um, this is the way you'll need to do it. Okay, so in the introduction section, we looked at um, what VMFX is and why we would want to use it. Um, in this section, we're going to look at what do we need in order to use it and how we set it up. So before you even start, make sure you have all of these components. You're going to need um, a VMware ESX host. Uh, VMFX is also supported on Linux uh, Red Hat KVM. Uh, but I'll be using uh, VMware uh, vSphere. Uh, you're going to need a Cisco VIC, um, either the M81KR Paolo adapter or the uh, 1280 uh, Paolo 2 adapter. And you're going to be needing to run Enterprise Plus feature set. That's because we need the distributed virtual uh, switch functionality. You're going to need a VMware vCenter and of course you're going to need your UCS manager. The environment which I'm using to set up VMFX, um, I've got two VMware ESX hosts running vSphere 4.1. I've got a vCenter um, server running uh, version 5.0 and my UCS manager is running uh, version 2.01s. So the uh, configuration tasks um, that we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be creating a dynamic VNIC connection policy. We're going to be associating that dynamic VNIC policy to the ESX service profiles. Uh, we're going to then export the vCenter extension file uh, from UCS Manager and register that vCenter extension file with the VMware vCenter. Uh, we're then going to create a VMware vCenter distributed virtual switch uh, on our UCS Manager. Um, which will then get pushed into vCenter. We'll then um, install the VEM uh, component on the ESX host, and then the final stage will be to add our guests on the ESX hosts to our uh, VMFX distributed virtual switch. Now, as mentioned in the introduction video, uh, there are two modes for VMFX, um, emulated mode or standard mode, and VMFX VM direct path mode or high performance mode. Um, now don't get confused, VMFX VM direct path mode is not the same as VMware's VM direct path IO. Um, in that instance, with the uh, VMware VM direct path IO, you would take a physical um, NIC or physical device in that ESX host and then allocate that directly to a virtual machine. And then within that virtual machine, you would need to run the um, adapter drivers, etc., within that guest uh, for that um, hardware. And that's the bit that breaks vMotion currently. With VMFX uh, VM Direct Path Mode, uh, we're just harnessing that functionality within VMware, but we don't require any um, additional drivers within the guest. The guest simply has a uh, VMX Net3 card, uh, you know, just like it would um, uh, running uh, in standard mode. Um, they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, the system can detect whether you have a port group running in uh, VM Direct Path mode or emulated mode. Uh, so they can exist within the same uh, uh, distributed virtual uh, VMFX uh, DVS, uh, distributed virtual switch. Um, so vMotion is not broken in either mode. In this video, we'll set up emulated mode. Um, as that's the default mode, uh, and then I'll uh, do a short additional video on the minor additions to also support the um, direct path mode. Right, let's go ahead and create our dynamic VNIC connection policy. So we'll just fire up UCS Manager. 
And we need to go into the Land tab. And into Policies. And we need to create a new dynamic VNIC connection policy. So we'll give it a name, uh, VMFX. Uh, we'll get a description if you like, the number of dynamic VNICs we want to create. Now this number is dependent on the number of cables you've got between your I.O. module and your fabric interconnect. And the formula is 15 times the number of cables, less 2, less the number of static NICs you've got configured and static HBAs. So I'm using 4 connections here. So it'll be 4 times 15 is 60, less the 2 is 58, less the 5 static uh, NICs that I've gone configured. So I've got two virtual HBAs and three VNICs, so that gives me 53 uh, total dynamic NICs. Don't get panicked, you won't see all these dynamic NICs within your um, operating system. Um, they're just available to the host to allocate to virtual machines um, as and when they're added to the VMFX distributed vSwitch we're about to add. So there's the two service profiles that I'm going to be um, associating this uh, policy to. Those two profiles are still tied to an updating template. So all I'm going to do is associate that VMFX uh, policy to that uh, dynamic uh, up, so that updating template. Uh, so there we go, VMFX. Now this will immediately associate that VMFX dynamic uh, VNIC connection policy to those two ESX hosts. Um, it will give me a warning or an informational message that that will require a reboot of those hosts. So, yep, that's fine. Okay, yes. And if I go into our service profiles, you'll see that all of those 53 dynamic virtual NICs are now in there. On both hosts. Okay, so we'll also um, the point of creating a, a you know a v or setting up VMFX is to get some sort of granular um, control of our VMs uh, to associate policies, to have a look at interface statistics, etc. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll create a LAN uh, COS policy, and we'll associate that to a port group that we'll create in our VMFX just to differentiate it from uh, virtual machines that are just in a standard vSwitch. So we'll go ahead and, and make a line uh, rate cause policy uh, and we'll give it a name of VM network. Okay. Okay, so that's our VNIC dynamic connection policy done and our cause policy created. Right, so the next stage is to um, export the vCenter extension file from UCS Manager and register it in vCenter. Okay, let's just go into our VM tab. Uh, if we have a look at that key, that's the key that we'll uh, just want to confirm is correctly um, uh, showing up in vCenter. So if we want to go into our little wizard here, we can do all this manually, uh, but there's a nice little wizard that guides you through this. So we want to just save that exported extension. Okay, so I'll stick it in my temp. And I'll say... Okay, so there it is. It's just a little XML file if you want to see what it looks like. There we go. And you can see that key um, at the top there. Um, you'll notice there it says Nexus 1000V. Um, it's the actual the same um, component that goes on the host as it does with Nexus 1000V, the uh, virtual Ethernet module. So it's the, it uses the same um, software. Okay, so let me just log into my vCenter. Okay, so I want to go into my plugins, uh, manage plugins, 
and if we go into a nice little white area down the bottom there, right click and I want to install another plugin so if we go and browse to it I'm RDP'd across, I should hopefully see my local hard drives I hope yep okay so let's go and find that XML file that we exported from UCS manager okay apologies looks like my VPN is going through a little bit of a, a slowdown period Okay, all right, so it should be in there. Okay, so select that. should basically see the file again okay and it's that same number so it's definitely the right file and so we can register that plugin and we'll ignore that I'm sure it's fine Okay, successfully registered. So nothing else we need to do with that plugin on the vCenter side. Yeah, so that's definitely the right one. Okay, so let's crack on with this wizard. So we'll do next. So we now want to identify our vCenter server. So I'll pop the name in there, vCenter, and IP address. Okay, and I can either create a data center here, or I've got one in there already. I want Solution Center. And the folder name that I want to put my uh, VMFX DVS into, just call that DVS, and the actual name for my uh, VMFX, so I'll imaginatively call it VMFX. Okay. And we'll want to enable that, so I'll click Next. Okay, so now we'll define our port profiles. Now, port profile is where we'll associate that cause policy we defined earlier. So we're going to find it, VM network. So any virtual machines that I associate with this port profile will get that line rate speed. And we'll put it in our uh, correct VLAN. Now the profile client, this is the bit that will get pushed into vCenter as the VMware port group. So this is what the VMware administrator will see uh, and be able to associate his uh, guests to. So again, I can associate that with just the VMFX I've just created or the, um, the whole data center. So now that should be pushing that information through to vCenter. So, okay, so we can see the vCenter I've just created, we have a look at the finite state machine, uh, we've got state NOP which is good and config success which is good. Let's have a quick pop into vCenter and see if that information has been pushed through. So I should see my folder and I should see my distributed virtual switch so it looks like there's some activity down the bottom there which is a good sign and I can see there that VMFX has been created. So let's have a